When Willett Clark used to drive down Main Street in Brookfield, New York with his horse and wagon, he was always followed by a pack of howling dogs. Clark resided with his wife and several children just south of Brookfield in a settlement known in the old days as Maine's Mills. The family was poor, but Clark did his best to support them by making and selling leather gloves to area residents. He traveled the countryside to dispose of people's sick and dying dogs, then turned their hides into popular gloves. At this particular time, Henry Spooner and his son Frank published a local paper called Young America, but later that became the Brookfield Courier. Henry Spooner also owned a large hound dog that was widely known as Spooner's Hound. The hound always seemed to know when Clark was approaching the village with his horse, wagon, and dog hides. He would call out his canine friends from the stores, the bar rooms, and even the more delicate creatures from their pampered beds in the homes of the socially elite. As Clark drove down Main Street, the dogs would pour out of the streets and alleys. Sometimes there would be about 25, and sometimes there seemed like there was a hundred dogs all howling and baying loudly, trailing after the wagon. The sight of the dogs crying out their woes, led by Spooner's Hound, tickled the funny bone of a distinguished Washington, D.C. attorney, Edward Maine, who made the village of Brookfield his home in the 1890s. Maine, who was also a widely known folk poet, sat down and penned his poem under the title of Spooner's Hound. I love dogs, and the poem was meant to be funny, but it's kind of gross, so I'm not going to read it. But if you're curious, you can pause and read it here.